Hi, this is Victor from Quixel. In this video, I thought I'd show you how I textured Azog from start to finish. Before we get started with the texturing in Dido, we have to create a color ID map. And the way I'm going to do this is by using Quixel Colors. And this is a tool that allows you to easily and quickly assign materials to your model. Pretty much what you do is just select what you want to uh, apply the material to. You search for the material type and you click it. And that's how easy it is. So I'm going to do that for the entire model, starting with the loincloth here. So we're going to search for leather, and there are several kinds here. So I'm just going to start with the, um, let's see what I should have here. Maybe worn leather, that sounds good. And the same thing for this one. And for this loincloth piece here, that's kind of different. That's um, kind of nasty. It's got like dwarf faces on it. So I'm going to go with fine leather for that. Um, and for these straps here and there, I'm going to go for um, black leather, I think. So I'm just going to select all these along with the thing holding the blades here. And I think that's it for straps. So I'm going to go with black leather. Perfect. And I think that's everything leather-wise. No, nope, here's another strap. Oops, there we go. All right, and then let's create the metal parts here, or iron. Gotta select all the bolts here, because I want them all to be the same metal. And blade as well. Gonna have that sort of like a pig iron kind of look, or like they were, the iron they had in the movies, like the black uh, edge highlighted one. So I'm gonna go with painted black metal, that sounds good. And I'm actually gonna have the same for the ring over here. gonna have the same metal for the boots. Actually, no, I'm gonna have a slightly finer metal for the boots here. But still, it's gonna look similar. But I just want to be able to add some variation in the texture. So I'm gonna go with, I don't know, galvanized metal. And here's another leather piece that I forgot. The boots, and that should be fine leather. And then we have the cloth here, protective cloth. I'm gonna go with wool. And we have some fabric here as well. It's gonna be the same thing, sort of like a thicker material. And there we go. I'm gonna make these the same kind of black metal. And now that we have the entire model um, material applied, the, we just need to bake it out. And I use Maya for that. And by going into rendering and then lighting and shading, transfer maps, you can create a flat diffuse color map here. B basically just select your mesh, um, add it as a source mesh, duplicate it and add it as target as well. Click the fuse, decide where you want to save it, the map type, and you just bake and close or bake. And that's it. Well, let's start off by creating our project here. So I'll start Dido and I'll specify the mesh. And the mesh consists of two different groups. Um, the first one is the body with the armor, the clothing and so on. And the other one is the weapon. And in that same group, there is the um, uh, eye or eyes and the mouth as well. So let's start off by adding the material ID. So I'll start off by loading the um, mace and mouth one. And next I'll load the normal map. 
and I'll set it to bacon, the curvature to bacon 3D. And the resolution for this should be 2048. And you can set these um, individually per project. And for the body, I'll do the same thing. I'll just load the color ID, the normal, as well as an aiming occlusion map that I baked before. And same thing here, I'm gonna check Bacon 3D for this one. And the resolution should be 4096 here. And I'll set the um, uh, target to specular PBR for this one. And uh, I'll do the same for Maze as well. And that's it. So let's hit create and uh, let it create the project. So now 3do is baking out the maps that we need, the gradient, uh, gradient uh, position, object space normals, curvature, and so on. There we go. So just like in the base creator, we have two different groups here uh, in the mesh group dropdown. So the body and the um, body and the maze. And by selecting the either of these, it switches between the two texture sets. So let's start off by taking a look in um, 3D. And same thing here. You have a dropdown for the mesh groups. So this allows you to isolate the two different mesh groups. So right now I'm only looking at the um, maze and the mouth and eyes. And if I select the body, I'm only gonna see the body and the armor and so on. And by selecting all groups, I can see them all at the same time. So I'm just gonna start by setting up some basic post processes here to make it look nice and make it more fun to work with. So we're gonna start with the highest quality, um, enable some, sh some sharpness, a bit lower, uh, some screen space image occlusion. I'm just gonna visualize it to make it easier to see what's going on. I want a bit lower radius and increase the distribution a little bit. And there we go. Using Visualize SSAO is really, it's really handy. And I'm gonna use a physical camera here. Um, I want the backdrop to be quite bright. And I'm gonna use a little trick here, um, optical vignetting. So I'm gonna increase the scale of it. And I'm gonna reduce intensity to get make like a get like a nice gradient background. And I also want CCD blooming. I think that works really well for uh, skins. It gives it gives you like a very nice soft soft appearance. I'm gonna increase that and slightly increase the exposure. I'm also gonna have a slight uh, contrast lookup table and just the default contrast saturation enabled. And I'm gonna save this, uh, save this out. So if I close down the project and open it back up, it's gonna uh, reset to this, um, to this starting point. And for this one, I'm also gonna use the Unreal um, lighting. I think that works really well for this. I think that's a really good base for it. Oh, and the navigation controls are, if you're familiar with Maya, they're the same. So by holding down Alt, left mouse button, you orbit around where your cursor is on the model. And Alt, right mouse button, you zoom. And by holding Alt, middle mouse, you pan. And uh, both the zoom and the orbit are relevant to where your cursor is on the model like so. So let's start off by adding some um, or by working on the skin. So what I'll do is I will hold down C and shift and I'll click on the skin and I'll base my skin on alien skin here. Just click create and uh, let it work its magic. There we go, so that's a pretty good base. I'm gonna go for some sort of 
and I inflame the skin. So instead of going with the uh, purple here, I'm gonna move towards the reds. Bright, bright, um, pretty bright reds. Something like that, maybe a bit less saturated and a bit darker. There we go. And I'm also gonna make the skin a bit more, a bit more towards orange. Just gonna tweak the colors, find a good spot. No, it's gonna be a bit more saturated. Yeah, I'll work with that. And I'm also gonna reduce the overall specular on it. I'll just reduce all these um, base materials to around 11. I find that's a pretty good uh, specular value to work with. Or to start from at least. And I'll also increase the um, glossiness just a little bit, like 57 or something. Just gonna check to see if I work with the correct, with the correct, yeah, exactly. And I also have some, I also have a detail here that I'm not too fond of, I see, uh, sort of a striped one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to reduce this in opacity quite a bit. So it's barely visible. I sort of like the idea of having it there. It kind of gives you like the stretch mark kind of look. Uh, so I'm just gonna keep it there. And I'm also gonna increase the gloss ever so slightly more. There we go. And I'm noticing here, I made a mistake here on the color map. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go into the mask here and I'm gonna paint it, do a correction here. So I'm just gonna be using a white color here and paint these areas in. There we go, so now it's all white there and I'll accept the mask. There we go, perfect. All right, so I'm actually gonna reduce the redness a little bit more here. So make it a bit darker and a little less saturated, so like 64 or something. That's better. And what I like to do when I texture characters, um, especially for projects where um, I don't have access to like heavier uh, shaders uh, with uh, subsurface scattering and so on, is I like to sort of fake it and I create um, create directional directional details like highlighting. Um, um, like different colors and so on, underlying uh, musculature and so on. So what I'll do is, um, I've just created this overlay layer by holding control and clicking the, the add clean layer. I'll make this red sort of towards the almost pink direction. There we go. And I will edit the Dynamask and I'll go into full shaded mode so we can get a better look at what's going on here. There we go. And what I'll do is I'm gonna be enabling the object space direction that was baked when I created the project. And I'll change the blending mode to normal. There we go. And as you can see, it goes from top to bottom now. I can show with the mask here to get a better look. And what I wanna do is I wanna get it from the bottom instead. So I'll go in here and I'll flip this over or invert this. I'll also increase the gamma slightly to make it a, a bit tighter and I'll increase the exposure quite a bit to make it more intense. So tighter and more intense. I'm gonna make them meet up more in the middle. There we go. And actually I will reduce exposure a little bit. It's a bit too intense. I just wanna tweak this, I just want this right. There we go, perfect. Okay, so I accept the mask. There we go. So, it's a bit over the top now, but it really, really gives you that organic look. It almost looks like marshmallowy in the in the uh, appearance. So I'm gonna reduce this. 
I'm gonna reduce hold by holding control to reduce it um, to zero in all maps because I don't want the uh, specular and gloss to be affected by uh, to affect this in these areas. I just want the albedo. So by holding control and dragging the opacity, all the maps opacity is uh, adjusted. And after that, I'm gonna increase the opacity back up in the albedo. It saves me a couple of clicks and it's um, a nice trick to have um, when working to save time. And I'm gonna check the albedo map. And as you can see, we got the reds uh, from bottom. I think that works really good. I'm gonna check before and after. Yeah, definitely gives a lot more organic uh, look to it. And now we have all these scars or markings. I'm not sure what they are. Maybe they're a combination, like him marking himself and uh, being scarred in battle. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new clean layer. I'm not holding control this time because I wanna I want the um, blending mode to be multiply instead this time. Um, so let's go into the Dynamask. I'm gonna hold Alt this time to uh, go into quick um, quick mode, which is faster to work with. And um, this uh, only shows the mask. It doesn't show the um, shaded uh, mode at all, and you can't toggle it. It's, you're locked into mask mode um, and it saves a lot of time um, when you're just making quick um, quick details like these so I'm gonna enable curvature set it to normal and I'll uh, adjust these so but instead of um, clicking and waiting for the preview um, to update I can hold uh, alt while uh, clicking so that doesn't change the preview at all but um, by holding by holding down Alt and moving these, um, I can simply not hold Alt uh, for the last change, and that will update the um, previewer. And I'll also change the mode to cavities. There we go. So we're almost there. I think I just need to reduce the large and maybe the big as well. I think the soft one is the main one I want to edit. Yeah, exactly. There we go, medium is the culprit here, because I don't want these areas here to be very uh, prominent. And I'll try addressing the contrast as well. And reduce the brightness. There we go. Okay, so now we're getting uh, to a point where we can isolate the scars. Yeah, let's go with that, see how that looks. All right, so let's make this, I want this uh, sort of in the purple spectrum here. So I'll make it a pretty dark. And I'll change the blending mode to multiply. Make it a bit darker. Yeah, there we go. looking pretty good let's go ahead and add another um, another layer here I want some more like dirt in the cavities and um, so I'll create a new layer and set it to actually I'll leave it to normal for now and I'll go into Dynamask again and go into full shading and I'll enable image occlusion this time and I'll set it to normal and increase the tightness and what I want to do now is if I show you the mask we're getting we're getting the material to show up everywhere except in the in the occluded areas. So what I need to do is I need to invert the AO. So I'll just click this invert button here. And as you can see here, now we're only getting the material to show up in the occluded areas. And I'll change the color. I'll make it a bit brownish. Dirty kind of look. There we go. And I'll try setting it to overlay and see what that looks like. It's looking pretty good. 
Let's just try to adjust the tightness and the contrast a bit. You can also hold M to preview the mask. Or not hold, but toggle the mask by holding by pressing M. I think that looks pretty good. I'll increase the tightness a bit more. Yeah, there we go. Also gives you some nice um, occlusion here or dirt um, in the eye sockets. We'll go into um, making that uh, more defined later. Um, but let's accept the mask for now and see what it looks like. Um, or we know what it looks like, but adjust the uh, color a bit more. Yeah, I like that. And let's do the same thing again. Hold control, drag down the opacity. And bring it back up to around 75 or something. Yeah, I think that looks really good. By holding shift, um, shift right mouse button, you can adjust, you can rotate the lights. And by holding shift control and right mouse button, you can adjust the um, rotation of the light uh, or a skybox in uh, both directions, both up and uh, uh, sideways. Yeah, I'm really liking this skin so far. One detail I really want to add is the war paint from the movies. I think that's really cool. Um, it's the uh, like a handprint on his face and uh, some uh, paint on his chest as well. So uh, the easiest way to do this is to create a new color paint layer. So I'll just click this and this will bring up the painting uh, option here. So as you see here, we have a new tab called Painting, and um, I will uh, look through the different brushes here and see if I can find one that works well for paint. I want something that um, has pretty sharp edges, like it looks sort of like, I don't know, some sort of chalky, chalky paint, uh, kind of flaky. So I'll just browse through here, see what I can find. I think I'll go with this one for the thing on the chest. But first of all, I will find a brush here called uh, under prints, this one. So I'll go over here and by holding B right mouse button, I can increase the size and B left mouse button, I can adjust the rotation. So I'll make sure it's white and I'll increase the opacity to 100%. And I'll stamp it out here. Look at that. That's really cool. All right, so let's do the same thing. Um, well, not the same thing, but let's continue um, to do the chest paint. Um, so this might work. Actually, no, I think I'm gonna go with a different one, uh, a dirt one. I think this will work really well. So let's try that. Make sure the opacity is 100%. And I'll make it a bit smaller. And I'll just paint it out here. There we go. I'll make it a bit thicker so it goes across here. That's really cool. Okay, so let's make it a bit... Um, Oops, so let's make it a bit more irregular. I'm just gonna erase some areas down here. And the same thing here. There we go. And let's go into gloss because I want this to be a bit, le a bit less glossy than the, um, than the skin. So uh, once we're in gloss mode, I'll Check mask using albedo. This um, this lets me only paint within the um, areas I painted before in the albedo. So I'll choose a mid mid range gray here. Use the same brush, and I'll just paint. There we go. So here is the gloss preview. I access this by pressing. Uh, 
2 um, on the numerical key. And I'll do the same thing up here. There we go. Yeah, it looks super cool. Alright, so let's exit paint mode. Great, okay, so let's lower the opacity just very slightly. And the same thing for albedo. A bit more. There we go. Perfect. All right, so let's continue fleshing this character out and add some more smart materials. So I'll start off by adding the um, iron or steel um, steel details here. So I'll do the same thing here. Hold C and Shift, and this opens up the material browser. And I'll go from metal, and I want some sort of rusted, kind of worn, so I'll actually just search for um, a rusted metal here. So rusted steel should work well. I'll try that. Yeah, that's a good base. I want to reduce the specularity, so I'll set this to around 38, let's try that. A bit less, maybe 30. Because I want it to be kind of dark. Sort of like cast iron. Yeah, that looks, that looks really cool. Let's go with that. And next, let's go in and add some leather. So I'll go in here under fabric leather and I want some kind of I want some leather with a lot of texture in it. Maybe this one. Yeah, I think this will work. Yep, let's try it. Yeah, that's a really good base. Cool. Okay, so let's go into the albedo and tweak it a bit. So I want a bit less saturation in it. So try 72 and I think the brightness is good. A bit less saturation. Let's try 65. Yeah, that's gonna work. And what I want to do now is I want to add some sort of stress point to it, um, where the bones uh, go up. So I'll create a new layer. Same thing again, I'm holding control. And this will create an overlay layer. And I'll Edit Dynamask, and I'll hold Alt to go into quick mode, and I'll go into curvature. Set it to normal, blending mode, and this time I want it to be on edges, so this is correct this time. I'll increase the big, and the large a little bit. I'll also increase the contrast quite a bit. Perfect. Yeah, it looks really good. I'll also add a texture to it. Yeah, I'll go with this one. And I'll increase the contrast. There we go. And I'll change the color to a bright, a bit yellow color. There we go, look at that, perfect. I'll reduce the opacity to around 70%. Perfect, cool. So let's go ahead and add uh, some more smart materials to the model here to finish them up. So the first thing I'll do is, I think I want this uh, sort of cast iron on his uh, rib cage uh, 
cage as well. So what I'll do is I'll just right click the rusted stainless stainless steel and mask layer to IDs. And this will open up the mask ID editor. So I'll just zoom in here and hold control while clicking. There we go. And I'll click done. Perfect. Go ahead and add, a, add the remaining leather here. So we have the straps and the loincloth here. And I'll start with the straps first. So what I'll do now, instead of doing the C shift clicking, I'll just go ahead and open the material, smart material browser here by clicking this button and selecting a nice leather here. I think I'm gonna go with the worn leather jacket, which is a bit darker. Click create and what this will do is it'll create the material all over the entire model or at this mesh group at least and what I'll do uh, after that is I'll just link it to the corresponding ID manually instead and there are two ways of doing this uh, the first one is what I just show you um, you can see click or you can right click on the uh, group here and I'll just see click it by holding C and clicking. There we go. Perfect. Right, so the next one is the loincloth. And, I mean, this really creeps me out, like dwarven faces there, but let's, let's do it. So shift, C click, and load up the leather category here. I want something that looks a bit more human like human skin so I'll, I'll go with this one it's a bit brighter and I might have to reduce the brightness a bit because I don't want it to stand out way too much yeah that could work I'll just reduce the specularity to around 12. It's not too shiny. And the last one here. That's better. All right, so even though it creeps me out, I really want to accentuate the fact that it's made out of faces. So I'll create a new overlay layer and I'll create a highlight layer here. Um, go into Dynamask, full shaded mode. and enable curvature. And I want the edges to be accentuated. So I'll leave it on edges. And I'll just preview the mask quickly. Yeah, that looks good. Just need to increase the contrast a bit. And I might reduce the medium one slightly. Yeah, perfect. Let's accept that. Actually, let's make it a bit tighter. I really want it to stand out. So I'll go back into the um, Dynamask editor. And I'll increase both the soft and the medium one. And I'll also increase the brightness of the reflectance value here and make it slightly yellow. That's something I really like about the suite, that you can go back and forth and you can tweak the reflectance values while editing the mask. I'll reduce the medium slightly more and also increase the contrast around 50. I think it's going to be a good value. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. I'll accept that and I'll just reduce the opacity slightly. So now the edges are very refined, or defined I mean but they're a bit too strong, so I'll compensate that this way. Perfect, let's just make the leather slightly darker, around 33% brightness, and maybe a bit more saturation. There we go. Great. 
Okay, so let's add a leather material to the belt as well. So I'll just see shift click and I'll find, I want, I want it to be brown, but not as saturated as the other ones. So I'll try the leather armor. Yeah, I think this is gonna work. Yeah, that works perfectly. Cool. All right, so while we're still working on the leathers, let's go ahead and add leather to the, or a material to his shoes as well. And same thing here, I want a worn dark leather. Since it's shoes, I want it to be very worn. So I actually think I will go for the same one, but I'll make some changes to it. So. Just let it uh, create it. There we go. And I'll reduce the, um, the uh, saturation of it to around 55% and make it slightly brighter. There we go. Great. So now there's just two more materials I want to add. The first one of the two is the fabric. So I think I'm going to make this a wool. Oops. Or no, not wool. I mean, uh, cotton, I mean. Dirty cotton. Great. And the final material will be the um, machine guards down here. These should be metal. So I'll go ahead and load a worn one. I'll try the stained steel. But I want it to be a lot less specular. Um, I'm gonna go for the typical orc iron uh, for this one as well. So I'll reduce this to around, I think 28 could work well. And maybe even increase the glossiness. Yeah, that works. And what I wanna do now is add some over the top edgeware to it. So I'll just add a clean layer. Make it bright. And I'll enter quick mode in uh, the Dino Mask Editor by holding Alt and clicking the mask there. And once again, I'll uh, enable curvature, set it to normal, and I want this to be really over the top here. So I'll just increase these. Something like that. And increase the contrast way up. There we go. And just for fun, I just want to see if I can use ambient occlusion here to mask out the crevices, uh, increase the tightness of it. And increase the contrast as well. Yeah, that works. So the ambient occlusion has multiply as a blending mode, which means that it's gonna um, occlude the underlying uh, masks here. So the AO occ occludes the curvature. And I think that works well. I'm just gonna load a texture to add some more definition to the edges. 
check the metal category and I'll choose a very worn one. There we go. Just increase the contrast. A bit more. There we go, perfect. There we go, great. Okay, so what I'll do now is I will make this quite reflective. Um, just because I like the look of it. And also increase the glossiness of it. Something like that. And I'll reduce the opacity of the, all the layers by holding control to around 75. And I'll reduce only the albedo to 50% by just uh, dragging the cursor, the slider. Perfect. Great. So now we have the first mesh group done. So let's move on to the next one for the mace and the eye and or eyes and mouth. I want to add in the second mesh group is the eye and the first thing I'll do here is I'll load up the second or activate the second uh, mesh group and go into albedo and I know this because I laid out the UVs I know the eye should go somewhere uh, down in the bottom right here so I'll make it smaller and I'll just work with this using some trial and error to get it in the exact correct location just make the surrounding red areas a bit uh, larger all right so let's zoom in on his face and see if we can get the placement correct that was not bad he's just a bit cross-eyed so i'll move it just slightly to the right here and update. There we go. Man, there brings so much character into him. All right, and what I want to do next is I want to create a new map here. Uh, I'll create an emissive map because in the movies his eyes are like they really stand out. It's almost like they, like they're emissive. Actually, I'll just make it a bit smaller to make him look a bit more savage or furious. So a really good thing about the suite is that you're able to add custom layers or just any kind of layer you want to and it won't break the actual uh, project. So anyone and a friend or a colleague can work on your project and Dido will run with no problems at all. Yeah, that's better. So to do that, I just click this um, menu button here and go into add new map and then emissive. There we go. So, what I'll do next is I'll just make a quick selection here. Like so. Oh. There we go. And I'll feather it. Invert the selection and delete. And what I'll do next is I'll just. Actually, I should make it a bit more blue in the tint. And then just make it a bit more intense by adding a bit of an overlay to it. Yeah, I think that will work. Let's preview it. Almost there. You just want it to be a bit more blue and a bit less... Um, a bit less bright. Something like that and just darken this slightly. There we go. Let's check this out. There we go. Looks really, really cool. Okay, so let's add some leather and uh, metal to his mace here. So what I'll do is I'll just create a new smart material and once again, I'll find a nice leather to work with. And I think if this one is going to work just fine. Right, I'll just make it a bit less saturated, around 60%, and make it slightly darker. 
Perfect. Cool. Okay, so next step, I'll just add a nice metal to the blades. Try and find one that's a bit rusty. Here we go. There's a lot of them here. Rusted steel. Yeah, let's try this one. Yeah, that's perfect. Great. All right, so I think there's just one thing left I want to do, and that's bringing some more life into the face of Azog here. And I'll do this by using the color paint feature. So let's just go to the first mesh group here and find the, um, the skin material here. And start painting, just click the add color paint layer. And make sure you're in either gloss or albedo before clicking that. And what I'll do is I'll just select a nice uh, organic brush here. Um, I like to use this one here because it got, it's got some nice big pores in it. And I'll go with a dark reddish color here and I'll work at a low opacity. I always like to be able to build up the... Um, when I paint uh, dynamically. So what I'll do is I'll just start painting around his eye. You can go into the different map preview modes by pressing the numerical keys. And by pressing one, you go into albedo mode. And what I'm doing now is I'm just adding some reds around around his eyes here to make get some depth in there. Just very slowly and subtly building up. And I'll make the brush bigger cover bigger areas, something like that, looks great, and I'll use the eraser tool and break it up a bit, just stamp out here and there, perfect, okay, and I'll go in, make the brush smaller, and I'll get a more deep red color going on and I'll just work on the inner part here as more reds it's a bit over the top now but I'm gonna break it up later by blending some colors in and so on and I'll go back in make it bigger and I'll go back to darker, more muted color here. And just paint over. Almost there. There we go. Great. And I'll do the same thing for his mouth or his lips, but I want more of a blue tone here. So I'll make sure it's a bit muted and still at a low opacity. And I'll just start painting away at his lips. I'll start out, start at the, like on the actual lips. And next I'll increase the brush size and I'll work on an area around the lips as well. Make them look a bit sickly. And I'll be working with a lower saturation one color now. And work on top of that. Great. And now I'll go with a darker color, more blue. And I'll work on that. Great, and I'll use the eraser tool at a lower opacity. That's looking really cool. I'll go ahead and go into the gloss mode here.
There we go. And I'll mask using albedo. And I'll be painting some brightness or some uh, glossiness onto his lips here. Increase the opacity slightly. There we go. It's very subtly. Yeah, I really like that. Okay, let's exit paint mode. And I'll just lower the opacity to around 70%. Make it a bit more subtle. Same thing with the albedo. Just increase it slightly more. There we go, look at that. Perfect. I'm really liking this. Actually, while I was painting his lips, I realized I hadn't made the actual mouth yet. So let's go back into the uh, second mesh group here and uh, quickly fix that. So what I'll do is for the teeth, I'm going to start off by using a bone or something similar. I'll, yeah, I'll base it on the horn. Yeah, that's more yellowish, which I like. I'll just apply that. Yep, we can start with that. Cool, okay. And next, let's add a sort of flesh to his um, tongue and his gums. Check the organic here. No, actually, what I'll do here is I'll just load a basic material. And I know there's a nice, yeah, cow flipped. I think that's going to work pretty well. So I'm going to create that. And I'll link it to the red color ID. And I'll just adjust the uh, reflectance values. And I want to reduce the specular to around 12. And also reduce the glossiness. Actually, I, I want even, even more, even less specular. Oops, let's make it eight instead. And I'll also reduce the saturation That works really well. Perfect. All right, so let's check out his teeth again. I want to add some, um, some a, a bit more, um, like discoloration to it. So I'll just create a new clean layer. And I'll make it sort of orangey or brown. And I'll quick edit the Dynamask. Increase the fine and the soft sliders here and increase the contrast something like that yeah perfect All right let's make them a bit more saturated
Perfect. Cool. Okay, so let's set up a nice, nicer render here. I want a bit of a close-up on him, like the top portion of his body. And I want to tweak the light a bit. I'm going to increase intensity. Something like that, maybe. And just tweak the backdrop. I don't want his head to blend into the background too much, so I'll reduce the brightness a little bit. Something like that. There we go, and I'll also enable headlight. And headlight is basically is a, um, the camera just pointing a light directly at the model. Uh, but this is way too much. Uh, I'll reduce this a bit. Just a little bit of fill light. And let's take a look at the post processes as well before we settle. Alright, so to save out a high resolution render, you click this arrow here, you set the resolution, and you simply click render. And this opens up the file browser or saving dialog, and you can just browse to wherever you want. I'll just save mine on the desktop here. Or actually, no, I'll save it in my D colon here and name it Azog Render. And I'll save it. And this will open up the dialog where you can preview it. And there we go. I really hope you learned something from this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.